This is the brand new HP Omnibook X laptop. This is the second Snapdragon X Elite laptop that I'm testing here in the studio. I have about five sitting outside, and this is probably my least favorite one so far. And I kind of feel sorry for consumers right now because you don't know what type of Snapdragon X Elite chip you're gonna get unless you do the research because there are so many different versions of the Snapdragon X Elite chip. I wanna give you an example. I just reviewed the Asus VivoBook S15 and it comes with the 78 variant of the Snapdragon X Elite, which is very similar to the Snapdragon X Plus, which is obviously a slightly slower uh, system on chip. This guy is also a 78 model. And I'll put it on the display so you can see what I'm talking about. And the difference between this and the more faster models is that these guys don't have a dual core boost, you know? And the multi-threaded frequency rests at 3.4 instead of, let's say, 3.8. Now, the other thing you have to be careful of is the power. Because when I had the S15, it came with a 90 watt charging brick. This one only comes with 65. There was obviously a lot more power being pushed with the S15, which means the performance was greater. And no, you can't just take the 90 watt charger, plug it into this and get the exact same performance. It's all limited in the BIOS and the firmware from HP. So you not only do you have to watch out for which version of the X Elite you're getting, you also have to figure out what type of power requirements are being used with the laptop because all these differences make a difference in terms of performance. But the one thing that this Omnibook does very well is give you a very quiet experience. Like it is really quiet. And even under full load with everything going, the loudest this laptop will get is 44 decibels. Now that's loud enough that you can still hear the fans, but it's not super loud that it's gonna drive you absolutely insane. And most of the time that you're using this, it's pretty quiet. You know, like you don't hear anything because most of the stuff you're doing is just general productivity. Now, all the same things about this laptop apply to the Vivo Book as well. This one on battery performs just as fast when it's plugged into the wall, which is fantastic. It doesn't perform as fast as the Vivo Book, obviously, and it kind of underperforms compared to some Intel Meteor Lake processors when it comes to like single core and multi core speeds. If you're buying this for Photoshop, which has now been optimized for ARM, it performs okay. Now, unfortunately, Adobe has removed the x86 version of Premiere Pro from Adobe Creative Cloud. You can't use it at the moment. I was lucky to test it with the VivaBook. You can't do it on this guy. Same with a few other apps like After Effects. They're not even available. Adobe is planning on releasing ARM versions of these applications very soon, but for now, you just can't use them. But the good news is if you are buying a laptop for video editing, DaVinci Resolve Public Beta 3, number 19, is made for ARM. And unfortunately, the experience, if you're editing 4K video, is not great at all. Worse than Intel Meteor Lake. Like I loaded it up on this laptop and on Intel laptop with Meteor Lake inside and you have a 4K timeline on there, it's, it's just not good. Like there's just drop frames, it's slow, it's buggy. In fact, it was so bad that I had to remove all the visual effects off the timeline just so I could render the file. And the Intel Meteor Lake obviously rendered it a little bit faster, but not by much. The MacBook Air was just flying, you know, it was just flying. And that's unfortunate because, you know, I'm not saying we should buy these thin and light laptops to edit video, but you can do it on a MacBook Air. And, and these guys are supposed to be in competition with that. Now, the one area where these things do excel quite well, and one thing that makes me very happy is the battery life. Like the battery life on this guy is really good. Over 15 hours of playback. And yes, you could argue there are some Intel laptops that do that with HD rundown tests and all that kind of stuff. But in real life use, everyday use, there's a big difference. Like if you're just sipping on battery, you know, browsing in Chrome or even Edge and, you know, in a Microsoft office, that battery life takes a lot longer to go down. Like I could easily use this for the entire day and not have to worry about charging. Whereas with let's say an Intel or AMD laptop, I probably will have to charge at some point. Now, in my previous VivoBook S15, I tried to play Overwatch and the resolution just wasn't there. Stuck at 1080, it was an awful experience. But uh, if you turn off Windows Super Resolution, which is enabled by default with the Snapdragon X Elite, 
it will fix the Overwatch problem. So I was able to go back into Overwatch, put it on any resolution I want and play it perfectly. Well, I say perfectly in quotes because it worked and I was able to get, you know, 100 frames per second at times. It would drop down to 30 here and there, but it worked. Like I could play a game, but the problem still remains that you are gonna have little hiccups. Because it's translating, you're gonna have a lot of drop frames, and I also noticed some screen tearing. And Diablo 4, even with uh, super resolution off, still crashes, so there's no changes there. And uh, any older title that you really wanted to play on these laptops still may have some issues. Now, obviously, it's a little better than a Mac because there's more games available to this laptop, but it should be able to handle these older titles just fine. I feel like Microsoft I don't know, needs to tweak that prism translation layer because it's just, it's good. Like it's gotten way better, but it's still not performing as good as Rosetta did for Apple. And I think that's the problem for Microsoft. You know, they're in a weird position. I know they want this to succeed. Like these Snapdragon X Elite processors are amazing, but it's not a Qualcomm problem. I feel like it's more of a software issue. Even something simple like Parsec, okay? This is a remote desktop application. You can install it. It works, but it's an awful experience. I'll remotely log into my desktop computer. It takes a while. It's very laggy. Like if you need to change one thing, fine, but you cannot have a proper work experience using the application. Even Google Drive doesn't work. So there's still a lot of x86 issues that need to be ironed out. Now the laptop itself, is very light like this is under three pounds it's a metal chassis it's very similar to other hp laptops in terms of the way it looks you have this two usb type c ports on the left hand side one of them is usb 4 no you cannot use an external gp with this right now and then on the other side you have a usb a port combo audio jack it feels like a very well made laptop when you open it up though you have a wonderful chiclet keyboard. It feels fantastic to type on. It's nice and clicky. I also like the little blue button over here. It's a little different, you know, something different compared to other laptops on the market. One thing HP did right was finally make a display that's very tight. Like there's just not a lot of wobble on this display compared to some of their Omen products. You have a big size touchpad. It's glass. Snapdragon just happy to have a sticker on the laptop. Sticker guy is just crying in happiness right now because they have another client. Now, the display is a little unfortunate. Uh, I don't like it. It's IPS and it's 60 Hertz, while most of the other Snapdragon laptops coming out at this price point have a slightly higher refresh rate. Surface laptop, higher refresh rate. VivoBook S15, higher refresh rate. Lenovo Slim 7X, whatever it's called, higher refresh rate. This is stuck at 60 hertz. Look, the color gamut is fine. The color accuracy is fine, but the screen brightness is just pathetic. Like 300 nits of brightness? Come on guys, at least 350. Let's make it an average, but 300 is a little low. So this is what the 1080p webcam looks like. I'm just using natural lighting. There's no studio lights going on, but these are pretty big windows. Uh, you guys let me know how it looks and also let me know how the microphones sound. There was one thing that completely threw me off about this laptop is when I compiled Mozilla Firefox. Look, I wasn't expecting this to be super fast because it is translating x86, but it did it in 85 minutes. That is terrible. And the reason why I think it went so slow is because of this SSD. This is one of the slowest SSDs I've seen in a laptop over the last six years. Most laptops these days have pretty quick SSDs. This one is performing at around 2,600 megabytes a second read and write, which is very bad for a laptop in 2024. Thankfully, it is swappable, so you could always take it out and replace it for something bigger and faster, but it should have been there in the first place. You have a swappable Wi-Fi card, and then of course you have your one fan, two heat pipes. The battery size is 60 watt hours. So here's the thing about the Omnibook. It's not a bad laptop. Like there's a lot of good things going for it, like the battery life, the size, the keyboard experience, etc. But every other or most of the other Snapdragon X Elite laptops at this price point usually have an OLED display. And if they don't have an OLED display, at least they have a high refresh display. And I can probably guarantee, I'm not gonna say 100%, that all of them have faster SSDs. And I feel like for that price point, when they're all matching it, there's just better options out there. I'd still buy this laptop, 
but I wouldn't buy it for $12.99. And if they have any bigger sales on this, and maybe in the future and the other companies don't, then it would probably be a good time to pick it up. But as of right now, I'd probably pass on this one. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.